someone who would pay you a fee for a deal could potentially become a partner on another deal. Here we are, guys and gals, uh, part two of this uh, uh, episode on going full time in property with the early stages. So we, we kind of left off last time uh, talking about um, some of the you know, outsourcing tools and applications that we're using. A bit of background shuffle noise there. We just keep um, keep control of that. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we left off there. It was a really good conversation. And equally, I think I remember, I think it was Nana, you in particular talked about education um, in, in the first part. And I kind of didn't, I wanted to come back to that and, and maybe broaden the conversation. So there's a, there's a lot to learn, wouldn't you say? So Nana, what, will you just kick us off then as you, as I'm referring back to you, we, what, what have you done to educate yourself? How have you gone about things in terms of property at least? So uh, what I first did was to uh, read books and uh, listen to you and uh, other podcasts. <laughs> and uh, after that, I went on a, that this uh, course, three hours free seminar, and I went to it, and then I bought bought the the three days event, and from there I went to mentorship, and I just keep on learning, connecting with people. So I always get educated because, like I said before, it's not I'm not from the UK, so it's even more important for me to learn and understand how things go. Mm-hmm. in the UK. Mm-hmm. So you've, you've done a bit of what I would call sort of formal training and education, presumably with some of the um, training providers, property training providers from what you... Yes, were. exactly, exactly. That's interesting. Um, wh- what about everybody else? How have they gone about things? And you did talk about books and things and podcasts before, so thanks now for, for, the, for the check there. That's how you get on this, on this type of panel, basically. So... Uh, <laughs> But so what about other people then? Well, how have they gone about educating themselves in, you know, from a property point of view? Um, I mean, I'd say very similar myself. Um, it's just a lot of, a lot of research, um, podcasts, there's YouTube videos, um, plenty of websites. There's a lot of information out there uh, that's mostly freely available or, or inexpensively available. Um, there's a lot of very expensive courses as well, which you probably don't, add much above what you could learn yourself anyway um yeah but for myself it's just been uh podcast books and obviously working with yourself richard which has helped a lot the me- mentorship as well i guess is the is a another um thing that's helped me yeah me- that's an interesting one we can maybe come back to that um so there's the the sort of media knowledge like books and podcasts and videos um, if you like, and then there's the formal stuff which Nana talked about. You kind of just taken us slightly into a different area as well, which is maybe mentorship or maybe even masterminding, I suppose. But um, you know, and you also talked Nana about network, so you know, plugging into different people. Um, kind of just another thing as well. So there's, yeah, so the property network event which I went to as well, so Nana Nana touched on. Uh-huh. Um, that was helpful. So the, it, low entry fee, I think it was twenty pounds. To go to a network event where there's some presentation and whatnot, and then you can actually talk to people, meet people, mm-hmm. and learn from their experience as well. So learning from others. And what about other people then? So is it is it similar, or has people done something a little bit different? I would say, uh, I think the, the the saying, you know, you've got you've got to love what you do to kind of be successful at it. I wouldn't say is is necessarily true, but I think it, you need to kind of have some kind of passion towards property because there's so much to learn, especially when you're just starting out. There's the smaller details and uh, to, the, to the larger details. There's loads to learn. It takes a lot of time. Um, I, I spent most of my time just listening to, like most people, listening to podcasts and reading books and not forgetting like YouTube videos as well. Um, probably one of my favorite ways to to learn things is YouTube videos. They probably don't have as much detail as as maybe an audio book or a podcast, but they're visually more entertaining. 
Um, and also just, especially now I've kind of come full time in property learning by doing. So when I first, first started, I was, I'm, I'm not typically a shy person, but, but I, I feel sometimes out of my comfort zone if I've not done something before and don't have a lot of knowledge in it. For example, like I don't really know anything about building. I, I had to get a handyman just to fit my washing machine. I'm not the most, uh, the handy person. So speaking to builders and electricians, at first I was a bit apprehensive, but once, once you've got these people that you trust, then you're okay to just ask them questions. They don't mind explaining. So that's something I've kind of learned in terms of property is, is you don't have to necessarily be, be apprehensive in, in some um, areas. Just, just be honest, be yourself not necessarily knowledge learning, but it's, yeah, development learning. Oh, I think so. I think you make some really good distinctions. I mean, um, I think let's go back to what you said about YouTube videos, for example, because, um, you know, we're in a multimedia age. And um, in fact, one of the, the second book I wrote, there's a whole chapter about, you know, learning and, and you know, prop tech in learning. But I was talking about learning styles quite a lot. And not everybody gets on with reading a book, for example. So, um, you know, just words, reading words. Some people find it better to listen. Some people prefer to see, to see or view things. Other people like to touch and feel and get amongst it. Uh, a lot of people like to observe other people. So there's lots of different learning styles, but equally there's lots of different learning methods now available. So I'm really intrigued that you're mentioning, you know, some different things, especially when you're bringing up that last one about asking questions about people who are in the trade. And, and having the courage, if you like, to to ask those questions, uh, and maybe you'll fit your own washing machine next time. Who knows? Because of um, <laughs> questions you asked along the way. Um, any any addition on that point? Uh, we covered most of the bases on, on on knowledge and education. Yeah, Richard, uh, the apprenticeship was very helpful for me because obviously I didn't know anything about uh, property, uh, business, investment all the terminology and everything and there is a lot to, to know and there is a lot lot of stuff and you have been very helpful with your uh, apprenticeship and all material that you sent to me and also the mastermind group is a very good uh, point where to be because if you need anything i've seen that there is a lot of um, stuff that the people are willing to share with other people and that can you make you better than what you know you are and uh, yeah, it's very helpful, apart from books and everything and webinars and other stuff. But I think uh, that it's very important to be surrounded by people in your um, same situation that, you know, they need the same type of uh, information uh, and they're um, um, going uh, forward and they're doing your, I don't know if the same journey or something uh, different, but, you know, the same uh, kind of uh, business. You know, it's really interesting you say about the, um, in fact, all of you in one way or another, or many of you in one way or another, talked about uh, in learning through network, through asking questions of other people, formal mentorship and masterminding. So that's kind of what I call, you know, community learning in a way. It's, you know, just reaching out and bringing in, you know, knowledge from other people, perhaps, perhaps not so structured, perhaps, you know, like laid out in a book or a course. Um, so would you say that's um, an important factor in the journey of being, you know, perhaps especially from the perspective of going full time? Yes, it is very important because sometimes you feel a little bit, um, I don't yeah, lost kind of, yeah. So you need to, yeah, you need that kind of support, the people that are in your same situation. Maybe not exactly the same journey, but in your in the same situation. So yeah, you can find the right support, and you can find um, answers to your questions. Basically, yeah, I completely agree. I would say also the mastermind isn't being part of any type of doesn't have to even necessarily be a mastermind, but a group of people that all share the same objective or goal is is massively important in terms of i mean the, the there has been a few times where i've got off track a little bit and and fell behind in in my visions and goals 
but having support around me in terms of the mastermind and um, I mean especially you Richard um, has kept me on track and that is is vital because people are sometimes yeah people sometimes you know fall behind and and don't necessarily keep up with what they promise themselves that they're going to keep up with but having that um what's the word richard the accountability around you is uh yeah vital in my opinion yeah i mean I mean, it's just we're, we're all together on this call and we're all kind of talking the same language we we've got a similar vision which is kind of bettering our our lives through you know putting ourselves out there into property etc but if you look outside of this group if you look into the wider world do you do you see the same or do you see something different is everyone into developing themselves is everyone into prepare you know building a future for themselves that they can take control of i don't see uh, the majority of people uh, just do go and do their nine to five and then they wait for the weekend to happen and then the week after that they wait for christmas they wait for holiday so they don't have a purpose the only thing i can say is when people are very um, uh, committed to training you know uh, so so maybe they go and crossfit or they go to the gym every day and they eat those types of things they are very committed and have a vision for but beside that no not not in my environment i think david it's probably good to cue you in as well here because i know, I know you're retired now from um competitive sport but wouldn't you say there's some parallels even to what you were doing in that environment to what you need to do to be successful in this environment? Yeah, I think, I think there's definitely transferable elements. I think they've all been sort of identified really here. And I think the key one is the community is, is, is regardless of what, what kind of line you want to go, whether it's in property or, or not, you've got to surround yourself with like-minded people who want to, a push you and also make you accountable there's no way in any sport people can just do it on themselves they have a coach they have a team they have a background team you know fit there's there's a and they have their training partners everyone you know even in individual sports there's a wide team behind family friends team sports obviously there's there's a group of people so it's i think in any walk of 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 life where someone has a has a vision has a purpose of, of something that they want to aspire to that's the, that is one of the fundamentals is having that community around them um whether it's a mentor coach a group of like-minded sort of peers friends it doesn't really matter it's, it's trying to get that extra because it always gets tough at some point and and that's the that's i think one of the key things is you'll know if you've got your purpose right, if you can go through those kind of tough points, those real low points, and you come out the other side and it's you're more hungry, you're, you're, you're more determined than ever to, to achieve it. And I think that's, uh, yeah, like the group said, that's, that's key is the network. I mean, that's interesting because I think that really leads me into talking about, you know, a bit about motivation and purpose. Um, you kind of made the point really well there, David, to be honest. You know, that, you know, we, we're, sounds to me like every one of you has got some kind of vision or purpose or goal, whichever language you want to use, something you're aspiring to. And then, you know, something that makes you get, get up or, or, you know, and put the hours in and, and hustle on the side, which is kind of motivation. Um, yeah, but equally, we, we sometimes slip a little bit, don't we? And, and Martin, you even said that um, it's good to have the group around you at times. So you've got support and accountability um, to help when when that motivation wanes because motivation you know is a feeling uh, actually uh, and so I don't know what you guys think so you know how do you keep going or how do you focus on the prize if you like is, is that actually what you do in fact please no, no, you don't need permission <laughs> uh, so before I just look at what 
my fiance and my daughter and that was just my motivation but now i've started to uh i bought a a book uh for my 34th birthday it was a present <laughs> so it's a diary it's a six minutes diary so three minutes uh in the morning three minutes in the evening and I write down what I'm grateful for, three things, and uh, positive uh, affirmation, and uh, what will do the day great today. So, yeah, so, and then at the end of the day, I just write down uh, what have happened, and yeah, and then it's a weekly and a monthly update. And then there's a, like, uh do uh oh what's the word of it in english quest come on quest yeah. quest favor do a favor oh exactly. yeah like a, a random, a random yeah. Yeah. or something yeah every day i need to do uh a, a good uh goodwill good deed yeah. good deed yeah, yeah. oh so that that's uh, how i can measure it otherwise it's just looking at them. I just have want to spend more time with them and just travel all around the world. Like you, Richard. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I can't travel anywhere at the moment. <laughs> I was actually looking, I was looking at a calendar appointment um, for, for one of our team meetings recently. And um, it was the, the date was going to clash with me flying to Tokyo to do, do the, to go to the Olympics this year. But guess what? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so lockdown is kind of making me a little bit itchy. I'd like to go and see those northern lights that you've got behind you as well. So, <laughs> but so you've talked about a personal discipline there, which would be like the the journaling or the diary to help keep you motivated and just keep you reflective and grateful. Um, some of you have talked about having people around you, uh, whether it's a formal mastermind group or just people that you can lean on. Um, but is anyone just in, in in terms of vision has anyone got something they want to share which is perhaps not you know i want to earn enough to quit my job has anyone got something that maybe is even beyond beyond that that they want to and happy to share yeah so i <laughs> sorry um I was looking yeah, so, at it's hard to tell on a Zoom call, I know, but I was. <laughs> yes. Well, you're to my left, so. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think uh, for me, I have a, um, a vision of essentially setting up a foundation to support uh, athletes. Um, having been one, having seen how, how hard that kind of world is to, to, to really make it, um it's just something that i'm very passionate about so for me i want to try and yes uh, you know earn an income earn a living through full-time property but the, the greater vision is to actually then try and give back and, and inspire and, and help others um make it through sport but also you know they potentially if it's a foundation there could potentially be other avenues that that can help support people maybe that's a way into into property i don't know but it's um, yeah, it, that's I think something that's has been quite a, a burning passion ever since we actually um, we talked about that a few couple of years ago now. So yeah, I think that's that's really really mine. Does that keep you going? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, during this this crisis crisis at the moment, obviously there are there are a lot of uh, other pressing matters, immediate matters. But I think for me, there's still a burning desire to help people and to help others. And uh, sport for me is just that way that I've, I've had that all my life. And I continue to have that all throughout the rest of my life, hopefully. And, and, and I'd like to give back. So, you know, the way that I'd like to do that is I'm not going to be able to do that through my nine to do nine to five job. I mean, It'll just take years, take take years, and it's not something that I'm I'm wanting to do. So, yeah, I think I think that gets me going in terms of that's my ultimate goal, and then uh, I try and work it back from there into into how that can be achieved. 
Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I think, um, and I wasn't trying to single you out, but I know you, I know you had a big vision, and uh, you know it will require quite a um, a big fund to make that foundation, you know, work. We've talked about it before a few times. Uh, yeah. Um, but it was more this idea. I mean, so we we've had, you know, Nana mentioned about random acts of kindness, for example. Uh, you talk about giving back, and there's a bigger purpose, perhaps, than beyond ourselves. So, I think initially. When we start in this uh, business, we, we're perhaps a, a little bit more me focused or us focused, you know, but actually, as you kind of imagine it, it's like that going up a mountain that you go up at different levels and um, you have a different vantage point, you know, once you're at the bottom to maybe one level up and that you things can change for you. And then then you can see another level and things can change again. I don't know if anyone's already had that experience. Has anything happened, you know, a game changing moment, aha moment since you've been full time, in, well, not, not full time in property, but working in property? Has anybody had that kind of, wow, this is it. This is what I need to do. And, and I, I'm going to change these, change these things. Maybe not. Mine is uh, probably, I um, so spoke about it before, but mine was probably figuring out the benefits of a crm system and and figuring that out early on in the business as well there's a lot of people that have have these have already kind of flourishing businesses but are going crazy with trying to keep up to date with things and loads of pieces of paper scattered around but if you learn the benefits of a crm system early on in in the stage of your business um then it will you can take that knowledge throughout your business and it will just make things so much more fluid i mean i could talk about crms for ages and i've, I've already bored a lot of people with it but like look into podio if you've not already awesome or maybe just ask you um <laughs> So uh, it's interesting because I, I started that, that piece by talking about um, like a big vision or goal. And, and rightly, Martin, you've answered in terms of making the business you have got work much more effectively in your case by looking at systemizing and, and specifically a CRM system. So um, it doesn't have to be this big you know, vision game changer. It can be just something that you've kind of stumbled across or realized as you've gone along. So I don't know if anybody else has got anything, you know, more down to earth perhaps than the Northern Lights. Uh, the, the <laughs> you see that my, thing you in? <laughs> my aha moment was uh, when I went to the UK and when we were at the property uh, uh, network we were we were in this 10x super conference and the people that i had uh, listened to podcasts and maybe saw on instagram and i'm not a shy guy so i just went straight forward to him and they were so open they were like a book that was my aha moment because it was okay, this industry, people are so helpful. You know, you can ask them almost everything and they will try to help you. They will even maybe give you a contact so you can use their contact and etc. I mean, let's say if you're in, in, the, in the clothes industry, if you go to H&M, and ask them, Ed, who's your uh, <laughs> factory <laughs> supplier? They will say no, but uh, the property business, it's, it's totally different. So that was my aha moment when I, when I uh, last year, when we were in uh, London at yeah, the Soup Conference. That's really interesting. You're right. I think this community is quite sharing, quite giving, um, willing to share things around. So that's a good one. Um, Unless there's any more on that particular point, what uh, we've, I've, I had, I wanted to talk about what I call the big three of resources, which is time, money, and know-how. Um, now, to some extent, we've spoken a bit about time in the early, early part, or certainly in part one. We've talked about knowledge and education. Um, so I can't, I think we've done two out of the big three. So at least one, which is, you know, and I guess my my leading question is. Have you all got a big bag of swag, uh, you know, 
cash lying around to to invest in property or is that something that perhaps is still a work in progress for you work in progress i think work in progress <laughs> and so so it depends, it depends. Ah, come on then well let, so the work in progress for some and it depends for others so Help me out here. Why is it a work in progress? What are you doing? What is the work that you're doing for the work in progress answers? And we'll come back to Nana's point about it depends. To build a big bag of swag. Um, well, mainly the day Probably job. Not the best analogy I know, but yeah. No. <laughs> to build, an, I guess, an investment pot that can then be used to finance properties. Yes, yeah, so I guess mostly the day job and, and looking for JV partners primarily. So I've been lucky enough to, to be able to find two. Um, so purchased a couple of properties with those or uh, three properties in total with two JV partners. Probably have an, well, probably will be looking for another property with one of those JV partners as well. So that obviously helps. Um, but then yeah, other than that, I mean, it's just uh, savings really from my day job. Yeah, so you, uh, I mean, you mentioned that you're in contracting and you know, there's rumors that the, it's a well-paid, uh, industry but you know if you can set aside savings from from your contracting that's obviously going to help um with the j you said you managed to find some jv partners were they were they sort of hanging around on the street corner or did uh with no, uh, people i work with and family um so close friends and family so i guess you hear people say to start there with your family and friends and yeah that, that's that's the route that uh i was lucky enough to be able to find a couple of jv partners that way and how did that com how did those conversations go? Uh, I can't remember now. Really, it's just, it's just they, they were, I guess they went very smooth. So it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah. yeah I, I, it wasn't much. I wasn't trying to sell anything. Definitely not that. I think it just um, conversation came about. I think with the, my first JV partner, um, a, a colleague of mine, I think he'd invested in some properties already anyway. Um, and I'd invested in a couple already and we just got talking and decided to invest in the property together. I was looking for a property. Um, I can't remember the conversation now, but I presume we just said, uh, you know, why don't we go halves basically? And that was that. Um, and then with, with my family member, uh, my brother, um, I mean, he had some funds lying around in an ice and we were earning, I don't know, half a percent, one percent, something like that. So next to nothing, losing money after inflation. Um, I'd invested in a few properties at that time. And again, it was just, why don't we invest in a property and uh, rather than losing money, we can actually kind of yeah. get more money coming in. Sounds like some pretty good drivers. Someone who had, had an interest and somebody who perhaps wasn't getting any interest. On that. Yeah. So, sounds good. Uh, David, you also said work in progress, but um, what, what, are you, what are you, how's your, how are you approaching it? What's your, uh, angle so on the money side it's um i guess because the nature of of having come from uni um starting at work so i'm just trying to save at the moment but obviously that doesn't that doesn't come in fast enough uh to hit all of these ambitions so there are a few different angles the the first one is to sourcing that helps that accelerates so that provides another income stream the second is start sharing um kind of what i'm trying to do the, the the ambition the goals to maybe not right now but in the future bring jv partners in um and they may you know those jv partners may be people i know now they may be people i i sometime in the future we'll, we'll, we'll figure out a networking event so just sharing trying to share the, the, the story and, and and where i'm going and i think really just looking at all the the possible ways of of doing deals and learning learning new ways of doing deals uh where money is not necessarily um something that i have in heaps in the side of my bed uh, so yeah, it's it's it's, ed, it's part of education, becoming smarter with savings for sure, uh, and being financially very aware, and then also just sharing, trying to share the story, the story, the purpose, what what's going on, uh, the business idea, and 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 seeing potentially if there are investors that would would invest. 
So that, is that more a case of uh, tell the story and, you know, it's like attraction almost. You know, people yeah. People will be drawn to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I'm conscious that Sean and Sylvana have been a little bit quiet. So I'm just getting you ready, uh, maybe, if you, if you want to, to join in the conversation a bit. But whilst I've just said that, and you can have a little think, um, Nana did say something. And you said something like, what did you say? It depends. What did you mean? Uh, what I meant was, it all depends what type of strategy you're, you're going to do, in my mind. So if you're just going to focus on rent to rent, then you don't need to have a lot of money. But uh, if you're going to do maybe, uh, I don't know, HMOs and bigger stuff, then you need to have some more money. I guess, even if you're bridge and et cetera. So it all depends. Mm. Well, on the, on the topic of rent, uh, rent to rent then, for example, so what would you say would be, if any, a typical amount of money you might need to get involved in, a, in, a, in one of your rent to rent transactions? I think, okay, so we, we're from abroad, obviously. So we have po uh, put a standard in that we will get uh, the money back in uh, nine months. So that's our stand. But what we've been taught from the UK, it should be six months before you get all of your investment back. And, when, and what is the investment? Is it like furniture and things like that? Yeah, furniture, uh, paint. So yeah. like, like refresh or refurb. Light refurb. It should maybe cost maximum around 5,000 tops yeah. so recover it in six to nine months depending yeah. um, and then what sort of contract length are you normally getting does it vary or five if, if it's not five we're not taking it okay. so it needs to be five because uh, the first year it basically will go break even if you're lucky if you're not lucky but yeah it will break even because you need to get the tenants in and etc. And, uh, and then you have two years left if you just do three years. Mm -hmm. So that's why we try to get five years. So we have five years on the one we have. So. And how do those conversations go? Are they well received or are they quite tricky? Uh, do you mean the payment or? Well, no. So you're talking to the owner of the property about potentially renting their property for say five yeah. years. You yeah. know. Do they understand so, it? Is it, go, is it easy? So the, the, this one that we have kept, uh, we did a JV. So they they did the uh, talking and etc. But we had an essay uh, before last year. And there we had to speak with the owner because that was on our uh, company. We were the management team. Uh, and yeah, the conversation was a bit yeah, he, <laughs> it was good from our the contract was good but the owner was uh, he couldn't fulfill the contract so we had to uh, break it oh i see okay right but that was sa service accommodation yeah service application right, yeah, right. exactly interesting um i did i did threaten to bring you in sylvana and uh sean um Perhaps I'll start with Silvana because I know that you mentioned earlier about flips and was, was there a particular reason for, for that? Or have you got something else prepared now? I've made you think about it that, you know, you, I don't want to throw a curveball at you. In the area of financing, what would you like to share? Yes, that's the idea to start with flips and we want to increase our capital because along the way we want to, the end goal is to have our portfolio and uh, yeah, when I started, I said to Diego, no, I don't want even thinking about HMOs and then Libs options, what was that? So I was really scared about that. But now uh, I was thinking, if you don't have, you know, lots of capital, uh, the HMO is a great way to have a good cash flow. And uh, also the lease option is another way uh, where you can uh, basically um, uh, you don't need lots of capital to start with. So yeah, I was considering those options as well. And uh, yeah, uh, it's something that I wasn't even considering when I started and uh, now it's kind of, you know, growing on me. And I think you need to, to have that confidence. You need to, yeah, obviously um, 
find the time to um, learn about these uh, things. Uh, they're called uh, creative strategies, are they? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to watch you. Uh, I don't want to go anywhere near that, you know, for when we first started talking into, hey, we could do a lease option on an HMO. And, you know, <laughs> you know you kind of, you've got more confident, as you say, um, as we've been talking. So it's good to see that change. So, yes, you can use creative strategies like rent to rent, like lease options that we've been speaking about. Um, you know, so it doesn't, you don't, as you say, no, no, it depends. You don't always need a heavy sum of money. Um, Sean, I just want to bring you in. Um, and Martin, I'm not excluding you. Um, so if you've got anything to add, we can bring you in too. But Sean, on the topic of finances and in property, one of the big resources, what, what's your approach? What's your view? Yeah, so for myself, it's, um, it's also a work in progress. Um, I have obviously the rental income uh, topped up with uh, savings uh, from my job. Um, then obviously the, the sourcing um, will add to that as well. Um, and I guess really the, the plan is to to create a um, a bit of a track record with the sourcing, and then you know when we come when we come across a really good deal, then it'll make a conversation much easier with a with a potential JV partner if we can um, if we can provide that that track record um, of some deals that we've that we've sourced, um, and then. But but I guess as as a sourcing agent, you're you're ideally placed for uh, as Silvana said, um, you, you know all all sorts of different circumstances can arise from uh, from deals you find you, you're not going to pass everyone onto an investor. That you know it, it may be may be the case where the you know another another option would uh, would suit the the vendor better in that way. Yeah, I was wondering if you're going to talk about the the sources, you know, ritual of not necessarily giving all the deals away to their client base and, and maybe trying to find a way to secure or cherry pick the best ones. But who I want, I don't want to sort of say that. I'm sure, I'm sure that's not really going to happen, is it? No, the client comes first. <laughs> it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. Of course it does. <laughs> that's why it's one of the benefits of you doing that, frankly. You know, and you find that bluebird deal, as I call them, you know, then you can perhaps try and find a way to take it down. If you're developing the relationships of your client base, perhaps someone who would pay you a fee for a deal could potentially become a partner on another deal. So uh, that all makes sense to me. Um, I'm, I maybe come back to you, uh, Sean, because I'm going to start thinking about some uh, moving towards wrapping up and what's changed, what you've learned, and any tips. But before I do, I just wanted to bring Martin in to see if he had anything to add, potentially around the topic of financing in in, in property. Um, I know you touched on it a little bit earlier, but. Was there anything else you wanted to add on this part, Martin? No, I, I pretty Sean kind of said what I was going to say. I mean, I completely agree around the fact that um, if a deal's good enough, I'm, I'm sure that I can find a JV partner or someone that has already the funds. And there's a lot of people looking for this hands-off deal, and I'm, I'm, I want to, and I'm more than happy to, like take it from beginning to the point of finding a tenant and tenant and a, a deal. So um, I'm sure that when the deal comes along, the right deal comes along, I'll be able to find um, someone that's looking for that hands-off investment. Yeah. So, you know, you, you're putting yourself out there and you maybe try and take fees from passing deals on, but maybe that bluebird one you can take on yourself potentially. So it's good. Um, thanks, Martin. And so what I'm thinking about now is maybe start to think about you know, to getting towards the end of the, the episode, I want to start doing some wrap up. And, and so part of it is, is really, what have you learned along the way? What, are, what sort of tips might you have? And by the way, you don't have to answer all three questions. It's just kind of, I just want you to think about these things. What, what advice might you pass on to other people who might want to follow in your footsteps? Um, and was there anything that nobody told you about? And you think, blimey, I wish somebody had told me that because that would have made a world of difference. So it's in that sort of context. So feel free to answer as much of those probably three questions that I've just asked you. And I'm going to start with you, Sean, perhaps, um, just because you were talking just now. So makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I guess one, one big learning for me that, that, um, that I didn't really know about was um, 
sort of from a personal view the, the setup of um, a sourcing company really and how much work actually goes into setting up compliantly um, I, I mean you see all sorts of courses and and uh, you know adverts for for mentors and they make it they all make it sound easy but that was something that I, I massively underestimated and it it sort of took three times longer um, and I guess tips for for anyone starting out um, I'd say make that jump and sort of join join some kind of of group or or mastermind program and I mean you know it doesn't have to cost the earth there's plenty of, of free groups on the uh, on social media that, that put out some really good um, content and uh, you, you know there's a real sort of group support there so uh, yeah I'd say definitely get that group behind you in some way and um, it, it really adds it gives you that accountability and and I think you said before it, it's it can get quite lonely on your own and it, it helps to have to have someone there to speak to or, or others that are going through the same the same situation as you. Great tips actually, to be honest. Yeah. The sourcing compliance took uh, four times longer than you expected it to. So you needed that support group to uh, to survive it by the sound it sound of it. Yes, yeah. Very good. Thanks, Sean. Um, who'd like to chip in next with maybe some uh, tips, advice, or learnings they've had, realizations? Yeah. I would say um, so. It's there's a lot of work that goes into kind of working for yourself, and that's not to be underestimated. Um, but you also, I think, what I've I've struggled with a lot is. You know, there's loads of people that are talking about waking up early and 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 you know working those 18 hour days and working off five hours sleep if if you can't function the next day there's there's no there's no way it's going to happen i tend to not wake up until around nine ish in the morning at the moment and i go to sleep at about one or two i'm not a morning person at all i i in the mornings, I tend to I just drink a coffee and casually look through emails. I, I've tried this waking up at 5 a.m. and it, it doesn't work for me. And if it doesn't, if, if you're also not that type of person, then um, just, I would say, just listen to your body. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's probably would be something that I've probably changed the most is, is not trying to, not trying to, do what these kind of entrepreneur gurus are, are gu, guru, gu, that's a weird word, isn't it? <laughs> Not trying to do what they're telling you to do, but just listen, do what works for you. Yeah, I think it's great advice. Yep, gurus. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yep, indeed. Yeah, be yourself, really. Uh, there's, um, what's it called? I forgot what it's called now, where you could actually do a test to work out your sleep pattern, your sleep style. Your, um, what your body clock but and circadian rhythm is it cro chrono chronotype that's what it is yeah it, chronotype yeah. yeah the test actually you can do for that so that might be handy but you probably know if you're a morning person or not um which i think you probably do martin cool who, who wants to go next i don't mind going next so yeah i mean in terms of tips i'd say um just to start start as soon as you can start early um yeah take action um, I mean, I started thinking about investing in property properly in about 2017, probably started 2018. So in two years time, I think I've probably done quite a lot. Whereas if I had started in 2012, I mean, I just, where would I be now? Probably a lot further along. Um, so definitely, yeah, start, start as soon as you can. Um, just do, do some research, do, do some education, um, you know, books, podcasts, as we've talked about already. Um, I'd also suggest to systemize where you can because um, that saves a lot of time later. And again, I guess we talked about time, um, being as efficient with that as we can. And also, um, yeah, I'd say to set goals. Set goals, so you, you know, kind of where you want to be next year or five years down the line. Yeah. And then just review them and, and tweak as you go along. Mm -hmm. So that would be my kind of key tips for anybody. 
Makes sense. Um, well, if you just started in 2012, you'd be on the you'd be on the beach or uh, wherever you were. I wouldn't be here. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's a very good lesson. Start start soon and take action uh, amongst the other ones that you shared. Thanks, Dominic. Um, of the remaining three, anybody got something to offer here? Everyone's been so polite. You can just come off and talk. <laughs> I'm. Uh, well, I mean. Most of the ones that I was going to say would have, have kind of already already been said, um, <laughs> but uh, I think the only one actually, and it's it's what Martin said I think earlier on today, or tonight rather, um, is to um, not be afraid to ask questions. So, you know, people people do want to help. People want to help others if they're hungry, if they want to learn. Don't be afraid to ask questions and and um kind of be a sponge surround yourself with those people and i and i think yeah that that's that's one of the key ones key ones for me really great thanks david if anyone's got any burning ones nana silvana uh yeah uh, i think you should uh, we were taught to the company uh, that we can trust sourcers and etc but uh, you need to check the person you're working with or and thinking of working with because it, it in i mean it's still a lot of money you're you're giving the person even if it's a source or a sourcing deal or jv or whatever i mean that type of amount of money you you don't retain it like in a day i don't <laughs> so you you need to uh, i think you need to do your due diligence so so uh i mean people used to check how much you can save on a mobile phone but some people don't even check when they give someone maybe fifty thousand pounds or ten thousand pounds and i i don't understand that but I don't know. That's that's my uh, tip. It's a good one. Well, you talk to Sean because he's got all the sourcing compliance nailed down. So uh, he's uh, he's all squeaky clean on that one. So um, he spent he spent three times as long to make sure he was as well. So <laughs> and uh, Silvana, I know you're waving there. Did you have uh, one you wanted to add? Yes, I want to say don't do like I've done in the last uh, four three years. So I kept my savings, sleeping in the bank account, doing nothing. And yes, I'm basically um, regretting that I didn't start earlier. And yeah, now I don't have the same savings, unfortunately, a little bit less, but still. And now I want to do something <laughs> with them and with my life. Yeah, well, it, there's the savings in the bank account for four years maybe, but I don't know if I've told you before, I, 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 there's going to be a certain person who's a guest on my own podcast coming up shortly, which actually will be in the past by the time you listen to this, but um, who talks about the four-year delay. I had a four-year delay be, between starting or deciding to start in property and actually buying my first series of properties. It was four years and that cost me two million in property value. So um, if I work out what I did in my first year versus what I missed out on in the four years. So that was quite expensive. So yeah, I'm, I'm buying into put your savings to work or start sooner, as Dominic was saying. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, brilliant, guys. So just thinking about the time. So what I'll probably do now is, is maybe invite any, any parting comment that you have. And by the way, if you haven't got one, that's okay. And um, maybe just, just name check yourself and where can people connect with you if you would like people to have your contact details. So go around the room, we'll just do a parting comment, give us your name and any contact details. Uh, just give me a wave if that's not one, something you want to do. Uh, and then we'll start to wrap up. Is that okay? Okay. So, should we start with the ladies this time? Let Silvana go first. I think we should because we keep, we keep letting her go last. Come on, Silvana, why don't you kick us off? So, what should I say now? <laughs> <laughs> just say, um, if, how, if, you, if you're happy to share um, your contact details, how people could reach you if you wanted to. And also, if you've got any parting comment at all, now's the time. Uh, I think, you know, what I wanted to say, I said it already this evening, 
-hmm. And uh, yeah, my conto detail is not easy because, you know, there, those are my surname and Diego's surname at gmail.com. So it's speda.olerdi at gmail.com. If you have any questions, you want to, you know, far away. <laughs> okay. We can put Thanks. them in. We can we can put them in the show notes for sure. Um, Martin, were you indicating to drop it into the chat as well? Um, oh, we can we can for the YouTube watchers we can put it in the description box below. There you go. So if it's if it's easy to say, you can say it. Otherwise, we'll put it in the show notes or the YouTube uh, commentary notes, etc. So thanks, Silvana. Uh, Martin, you're in the chair, I think. So uh, why do you carry on? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you can find me on. Facebook, Martin Evans. If you're going to add me, just put a message beforehand. Get a lot of random requests. Um, or just email. Um, probably the best, easiest one to remember is martin at thepropertyvoice.net. We'll use that one. <laughs> Why not? Why not indeed? Thanks, Martin. Um, anybody else want to part in comments or contact details or. Dana, come on. You're so polite. I put my hand up. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Nana Pierce here. Yeah. Um, our details we have an Instagram page, uh, Miracle uh, Underline Properties Underline LTD, and Facebook Miracle Properties LTD. And my name is Nana <laughs> Pierce here yeah, on Facebook. And uh, if you want to email me, it's just nana at miracleproperties.ltd.com. That's fine. I think that's all. And I have a YouTube channel as well. <laughs> Miracle Properties LTD. <laughs> and your name is Nana PSC. Got you. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Nana. Uh, who else wants to share their contacts or parting thoughts or both? Yeah, so... Uh, you can get me on Facebook, Sean Thomas, and that's S I, S I O N Thomas, um, or via email at um, Sean at sdpropservice.com. Um, or if anyone wants to take a look at the website, sdpropservice.com. Um, yeah, they're probably the best ways, really. Thanks, Sean. Flipping the coin between David and Dominic. Okay. Go after you. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so just part and comments. It's just been a very good chat. So thanks very much, Richard, for having us on. Um, yeah, it's very, very uh, good time. It's been fun. Um, if anybody wants to reach me, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Dominic Hardy, D-O-M-I-N-I-C-K-H-A-R-D-Y or uh, via email at domhardy at eonproperties.co.uk. So it's eon, E-O-N, properties, one word. Thanks for the parting comment as well, parting thought. I really appreciate that. I'm going to have one on my own in a minute, but thanks for the contact details, Dominic. And so, David. <laughs> I was going to say the same as Dominic. Um, so, yeah, thanks for having us on. I have, I've said sort of everything that um, I want to say to, to, to share. In terms of uh, contact details, um email probably the best one is uh davm44 at gmail.com uh or on linkedin just uh david masters uh, i've no idea how else you'd find me so it'll be the link in, in in below and uh yeah that's it thank you well we'll make sure we all the all the contact details uh, are, are circulated um i'll ask for them from you again later so we can make sure they're all captured and correct spellings and things like that because you know sometimes get that a bit wrong um you know my delicate age but i just want to say well thank you actually i think it's been brilliant i did say can you you know compete with the guys who guys and gals who who shared last week um the second steppers um you haven't heard them yet but i think you can safely say absolutely yes not quite sure who i'd say was came out on top i think it's really good quality share both both times to be honest there's a lot of really really great content here I'm going to get the um, show notes transcribed as well. So you can, you can read it if, if you don't want to listen to it or watch it. But uh, yeah, brilliant. Thanks so much. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking it out for what is quite a long session as well. 
it's good to get the Northern Lights uh, little backdrops as well to just. <laughs> thank, thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely welcome. Thanks a lot, guys and girls. Have a good evening and we'll see you soon.